Hello, folks. Welcome again. I am the one. I am the only Hobo Tom. I have a lot of stuff to get into tonight. Um, to begin with, I haven't done this. But I have to give a shout out to me. For here is my bubbly baby. Happy birthday to me. Uh, oh, wow. That was perfect. Cheers, folks. Ah, a little bit of bubbly. Bubbly, bubbly. And wait. There's only one other way to celebrate my birthday. Here it is, folks. All oh, the pyro. There we go. And also, because I'm not here to talk about my birthday, although that is always important, though, so there's a little bit more bubbly. It's time to talk about some Impact Wrestling. It's a Tuesday night, and tomorrow I give up everything. Tomorrow's Ash Wednesday. Wow. I'm glad because I got so fat today. I had a deli delicioso chicken fresco pizza. And on that pizza was grilled chicken sausage, arugula, goat cheese, on top of a layer of crushed tomatoes and chiles and mozzarella cheese. On a homemade pan pizza crust, some nice fine vino because it is also... Barty Grahal, folks. Whoa. I'll show you that bottle next. And I had lemon icing cake. So good. And again, a little bit of the bubbly. And I have exactly 29 minutes to finish all the bubbly before Lent begins. So again, with that being said, I'd like to thank everyone for watching. And I would especially like to thank Puffy. You, sir, have earned that six count.
Christmas hair. The mid-card ace. Thank you very much, sir, for your interaction. You, sir, are an air guitarist. Toys for thoughts. You have definitely, you're definitely listening to your briefcase boombox. Akagda. Octagon Cito. I apologize if I got that wrong. I have had some bubble. But you, sir, can crawl out of here. Alberto Obero! You, sir, always win somehow by dirty pen. And Chad Warden's Warders 2, I'm sorry. Again, I blame it all on the bubble. You, sir, are a member of the El Generico Band. All that being said, Mother Bubble, don't worry, I know where they're. Let's talk about some Impact Wrestling, and oh boy, was it kind of a weird show? It was kind of good, kind of WWE-ish, kind of Impact-ish. 
And what I mean by that, let's see here, I can actually cross that off. In fact, that the first match started off RVD versus Daga. And this was actually lined up to be pretty good. Katie Forbes. Oh my God. Katie Forbes is so much booty. So much booty on display. And as I said to. I think it was Toys for Thoughts. Yeah, the, the only thing that. Again, I think he coined my. I think he's going to coin my phrase. Oh, how did I. What? Hide scene. Yeah, because that's the only thing her, her outfit did was hide the taint. Whoa. That's RVD. I'd qu just quit wrestling. Whatever Katie Forbes wants. If Katie Forbes got me a boat, I, I, I'd be out of this racket, folks. I'm sorry. You know you would be too, though. So, again, for, uh, for the most part of this match, it's outside RVD. He has control. For the most part, it's a kind of really basic match for RVD. Very simple strikes. Nothing too complex. Back in the ring, there's the big kicks. The near Van Daminator by RVD. And then he just goes out and he just wants to make out time. I'll be honest. If I had a, girl, if I had a woman like Katie Forbes, it would just be make out too. If I had a girlfriend, Right now, make out time. Hey, nothing wrong with that. Oh, also, I know that someone asked about this. You will see probably my ex girlfriend when I do my two year anniversary special sometime next month. And you'll see kind of the one bump I had for a while until we broke up, but I'll get to that later. Uh, with this, again, Daga makes his comeback. It's a near roll up. And then Katie Forbes leaves. She was like on her cell phone saying, all these trolls. But you know what? It's not me because I don't even know how to use my cell phone. I use my cell phone for phone calls, text. Every so often, the internet, my calendar, and calculator. That's it. I use it for five things. Some things are much more complicated. Not me, though. I think they also have an app where you can, like, find your phone, too. That's kind of cool, but my phone, kind of right back there. And then when I go to sleep, well, it's right over there. And when I go to work, it's in my hat in a locked cabinet. I know where my cell phone is for the most part all the time. Sometimes I do misplace it, but then, like, well, where do I leave it last? Ooh. But that's okay. Uh, Daga also kicked, he also reversed the monkey flip. Wow, that was awesome. And a big head kick from Daga. But Daga goes up top. RVD just kind of rolls out, and then he's like, Where's my woman at? And he just leaves. Again, if Katie Ford was my girlfriend, I would just leave too. As I always tell my coworkers, when they say, oh, you're going out to lunch, I'm like, yep. Oh, well, we'll see you later. I'm like, maybe. First woman to buy me a sandwich, or more so, buy me a boat. It's this prize, folks. So, uh, you never know. Again, the first woman that's trying to do a sandwich, or first woman that says, hey, I have a boat, take me fishing. See ya. So again, I I can't blame RVD. Uh, so Daga gets the count out victory. I'll tell you what, honestly, it was pretty entertaining. It was a cheeseburger match. And then out, and then backstage, Katie, she talks about all the trolls. RVD's like. Listen, they're trolls. They have no life. That's why I don't troll. I guess if I don't troll, I do have a life? That's always good. And reassuring. Then Joey Ryan comes out of nowhere. Joey Ryan says, I used to be known for my dong. 
RVD is known for something else. And Katie Forb, known for her bootay. And again, that the most large bootay being held up by what I also coined as a booty hammock. I have no idea what a booty hammock is. That's just what it looks like. Again, all it did was not show off her taint and keeps them from getting banned from Twitch. That's it. Next match we have uh, Wentz versus Raji. Raju of the Desi Hit Squad. Oy. And this was actually really fun. Everyone was ringside. The rest of the Rascals were there. The rest of the Desi Hit Squad was there. I think they're going to have some kind of six-man tag match next week. I predict that. My predictions are true. You heard it from me first. Uh, one says alligator roll. Always good to see that. Then it was counter wrestling. It's always fun. I'll tell you what. I'll never complain. I was shocked. This is actually a really good match. Rahik Raju, again, very strike heavy. Wentz being one of the wrestlers. Fly, Wentz, fly. He did. He did. Uh, Rahik missed the knees. But Wentz does not miss the knees. Then there was Valencia. Oh, um, I know. Ooh, um, Candice Story calls it something, but it's just like a whole bunch of strikes from Wentz, very program looking. Uh, Shira gets up on the right. He eats the right hand. Shira is no longer invincible looking. And that was a flatliner kick out by Wentz. And again, that was that was that headbuster. Oh, that was concussion city written all over it. The rascals eventually also nailed Shira. Shira's looking human, but remember, it's taken three people to take him out. That's good. Keep him looking strong. Wentz missed a swanton. Rahik, however, did not miss the turtle stomp. And Rahik Raju wins. I'll tell you what, this was probably the best match of the whole whole night. This was a surf and turf match. And the other really fun match, I was shocked. Impact always surprises for some reason. Uh, it was Miranda Alize. Miranda, I'm single too. She was taking on Jordan Grace. I'll tell you what, this was fun. Uh, they start. To, uh, Miranda Alize unmasked herself. Them. Oh, saying you have a luchador background, you willingly take off your mask. I'd rather see you with a half mask. Although again, Miranda Alize, you're kind of cute looking. But with that, um, they tie up. There's no clean bake from Elise. He shoves her. Good heel work. And then Madison Reno was in her corner. I guess she's trying to mentor her. That's fine. I'm okay with that. Uh, good rope running. Again, Melinda Elise. I really can't say enough. I want to see her come triple mania. So I will be hopefully co-streaming that. Just like I did last year if it's on Twitch. Even then, I might be co-streaming it anyway, because it's going to be worth getting another copyright strike for that. But again, she did a tilt to roll head, head scissors. That's great. To a Huracan. Alice is looking good. I can't complain. I mean, I want to see her at Triple Mania. Uh, eventually, Jordan Grace does get the upper hand. The Cannonball. The good showing by Alice until the Gracie driver. In, you kind of knew what the match was going to be. Jordan Grace is not losing. Is some person off the street. This was still a fun match, though. I'm shocked. Impact Wrestling, Women's Division, Bueno. Ben, Ben, Ben. AEW's. Marder, Marder, Marder. Again, the crazy driver wins the match. I'll tell you what, it was still a surf and turf match.
And then I think before we had this little Ace Austin promo, I actually begin to like this magician gimmick thing. It's different. He uses it in the ring. Again, he, he produces a card, uses it to cut people. It's just not distraction. It's just not fluff and stuff. It's tangible. I like it. I kind of... Ace Austin's gone away from porn star too, which is good. Uh, then there was the Chris Bay coming soon. I think I saw him wrestle once in Impact when they were up in Canada. And there was Havoc! Havoc has that super push-up raw. They have Jessica. I'm single too. And Rosemary, Rosemary comes out. Rosemary. Yeah. Like when you come back to Orlando, look for hobos. They give a promo because it's going to be Havoc, I think, versus um, Susie next week, so that'll be fun. And then this was kind of weird because in uh, Dayton, Ohio, they were at a, another wrestling promotion, um, Pro Wrestling Revolution. I don't know what that is, but whatever. Uh, Mike Elgin versus Eddie Edwards for their fourth best out of five series. Elgin, for the most part, looks so strong. And he, go, he goes to the top rope, though. Why, Mike? Why? Only a hobos like me should go to the top rope. They do really stupid things like moonsaults. Because, again, obviously, Eddie Edwards got him down. Especially after the beating he was giving Eddie Edwards. Just, just beat him some more. Eddie Edwards hit the superplex. Superplex. Always looks amazing. I, I, I think that's one of the things I regret not doing. Not Either not being a part, not just not being a part of a superplex. That seems kind of cool. And then again, if you go back, I think there was a New Japan death match. It was a ring in the middle of a pool. Being power bombed into a pool. That just seems like fun. I actually think we used to, actually, when I was a kid, we used to suplex each other, each other into pool, into the public community pool. That was actually kind of fun. It was, it's a pool. It's water. Yeah, it's that shock, but it's fun. I don't know. That'd just be fun being suplexed into a pool. You're in a power bomb. Did I ever do that to hell? Oh, yeah, I did do that to <laughs> Yeah, I did that to my ex-girlfriend. And that was fun, though. I thought it was She's like, she was terrified of water, though. I don't know. You have to respect water, not be scared of it. But getting back to pro wrestling. Yeah, and so much back and forth. And this ring was weird because it was like in like a pit area. The first row was like, here's the ring. And then the first row was like elevated. I don't know. Uh, then it was so much back and forth. Again, Eddie Edwards missed the Boston E party. And he won by a roll up. It was kind of predictable that they would go two and two. So with that predictability, and it wasn't their best match, it was just a basic match. This was a ham sandwich. And they had Petey Williams come out. Petey Williams and the Canadian Destroyer. Team Impact. Uh, Team Canada TNA. Then, of course, Moose. Moose. Moose came out. Said, you're not a superstar. And remember, Moose Ash and Petey Williams, Moose did hold a belt once. He was the grand champion once of TNA wrestling. I actually remember that. I think that's when, I think that's when Impact, they were becoming, they were going from TNA to Global Force Wrestling. To impact at the time of the broken yes, universe. Wait, I have to be careful. I think I've heard rumblings of of, of the of the von Breaker of men come around. I have to be very careful about saying broken for fear that the von Breaker von breaks me. 
Well, we'll see what will happen with that. Then it was Moose of Moose Nation. Then you have the Mac and Johnny Swinger. Yeah, they give a promo. Disco, Disco Inferno shows up. We'll have a tag team eventually of the Disco Inferno and Johnny Swinger. That'll be kind of fun. Mac just says, I'm done with you losers, losers and leaves. Uh, then there was an amazing behind the scenes of whatever impacts tough enough is like. It was pretty cool. I actually do appreciate that stuff. And when I finish the book, I'll, sh I'll show you folks a book I'm reading. It's the last days of WCW. It was a Christmas gift. I'll tell you what. I think as I'm getting older, I still like women. I'm single too, ladies. But I appreciate more of the the behind the stage stuff, all the politicking that goes on. It's actually pretty interesting. I'll show you what book I got later. And uh, then we have Ace Austin versus Tessa Blanchard. Uh, Ace starts off quickly. He goes off. He goes right after Tessa Blanchard. Uh, this was a good intergender match. WWE can actually learn a lot from this. So could AEW. I mean, it's presented as a wrestling match. They're doing wrestling holds. Yeah, there's chops and forearms. There's some physicality to it. Tessa Blanchard, she's kind of buff looking. Ace Austin, uh, I, I mean, not the, he's not the 6'5", 300 pound of all muscle guy. So this makes sense. It's not cringeworthy. It's not like, ooh, like Minoru Suzuki just slapping the living Jesus out of Kana, also known as Asuka. It was, that was like, after a couple of slots, it was like, oh, okay, Minora. These are, she's not a young lion. But that's nothing, nothing cringeworthy, really. Um, it's not sexist. They're doing wrestling moves, the chop, the forearm. Ugh, all part wrestling, European uppercut. This, oh wow, makes sense. That's the most amazing thing. Um, so again, WWE has to learn to take notes. Again, with Becky Lynch. Or even Selena Vega. No, Selena Vega's tiny. But, like, definitely Charlotte. She could go against, like, an Angel Garza. Angel Garza could do something to offend her. And it could be Angel Garza versus Charlotte. Or Angel Garza versus Natalia. Again, kind of the same weight-ish. Same build. As long... If Angel Garza is as hilarious as he was the last time, he could do something absolutely stupid, like kiss Natalia's hand. Natalia could slap him. That leads to a match. And again, if it's like the most striking is involved is forearms and chops, I'm okay with it. And I don't think it would necessarily be bad. You don't, again, take this with a grain of salt. You don't want Io Shirai. You don't want... Oh, who's really tiny? You don't want... It's a tiny woman. You don't want Nikki Cross going against Bobby Lashley. That's bad. Or you don't want Lana going against anyone. Because that's terrible. But like a Charlotte versus Angel Garza? Natalia versus an Umberto? Um... Natalia versus and AJ Styles is one hundred percent professional. AJ Styles could could probably give Charlotte a three and three quarters, four and a quarter star match. Again, AJ Styles he's a professional. He knows what to do. And Charlotte, I think, is actually taller than him. If not the same height. So as long as it makes sense. And it's, it's not an overwhelming beating. It's good. Uh, Ace Austin, again, he's just kind of fun to watch. Uh, again, uh, he's actually getting much good. Again, with the with the magician stuff. Again, and that gut buster. But again, a real wrestling move. I can't. He did a wrestling move on her. 
It's a, it's a wrestling match. That makes sense. Tessa Blanchard. Again, amazing chain wrestling. How, however, Tyler Valkyrie shows up. And we gotta fill the dust to finish, baby! And you know what that means. Even if he had an impact where this, that, that evil, this, sky me, conniving, flannel, just there reigned supreme at one time in Dixie Carter with you before uh, the late great. For me, that's the rose. This was a dust that finish, baby. But it was a dusty old cheeseburger. The Tessa Blanchard sewed up because Tyler slapped the taste out of her mouth and just beat her. So, in that area, it made sense. So, this match was a cheeseburger match. And I'll tell you what, overall, this was really a pretty entertaining cheeseburger. And now, folks, unfortunately, it's midnight. Once I go to sleep, lunch starts. It's officially Ash Wednesday. But like certain traditions, Ash Wednesday does not start until the sun comes up. So, oh, wow. That's the last for 40 days. And 40 nights. And I'll be a sober hobo. A bubble. I shall see with this. Again, this is the last of my birthday celebration. And it's time to continue a little bit with the pro wrestling. Let's talk about the NWA. So it starts off with an interview. Tim Storm has the interview. Danny Deal shows up. Wait a second. I saw this in Fuck Wrestling. Friendo Unified Championship Wrestling. Where it was Barry Bratworth. And Holiday Harry. Land of F and Holiday. Which is why I still sent out for Christmas. Some well, I used to look at that way. That sucks. I got late tonight too. Damn it. Oops. But then Gills comes out, and I'll tell you what. That jacket is about two sizes too big. It's actually probably about four sizes too big. Uh, they do a whole interview. And Jack Stain comes out. I haven't watched NWA since they turned to this format. I want to see more of Jack Stain because he looks like a legitimate pro wrestler. Here's to you. And Matt Cross. Wow. I miss him as son of, son, son of Havoc. And the thing is, with, with Matt Cross, he looked great under the mask. I'd probably look great under a mask, too. But see this, folks? Here. Well, this is getting cut in a couple of weeks. But see this? There's not much of it. But what's left, at least, is not great. Actually, more gray here. But and over here, there's a little gray. But I didn't realize Matt Cross has so much gray hair, though. In fact, he has more gray hair than I do, which is not necessarily a good thing. And, and by the way, only because he did kind of promo, who's had more success, Matt Cross or his girlfriend, Ruby Wright? How do you love Lace? Not your cousin. Boo! You'll get booed by me. Tell me that Heidi Lovelace is your cousin. Yeah, don't lie to me. I am the man that embarrassed and made Tegan Knox turn purple because I remember her as Nixon Newell, the girl with the shiniest wizard. And I told that story a thousand times. I have a, I have a selfie of her. I'll keep that selfie on my cell phone for all eternity. Uh, just a very quick recap. When I went to NXT, Tegan Knox was introduced as the girl with the shiniest wizard. Uh, or shiningest wizard. I'm like, shiningest wizard? No. There's a girl with the shiniest wizard. 
that's Nixon Newell. And I saw him like, that's Nixon Newell. Uh, to the guy in front of me, that's Nixon Newell. She's like, yeah, whatever. And I came up to her, I'm like, oh, Tegan Knox, you were Nixon Newell in WCPW. I remember you. You had met, you had amazing matches against Bree Priestley. You stuck her head in her chair, and gave her the Chinese wizard. You were a WCPW Women's Champion. She's like, uh, you remember that? You know who I was? Uh, yeah, I did that. Uh, yeah. And of course, the best person to ever meet in any wrestling show, um, Chris Hero, Kaya Sonos was next to her. He was laughing. He was like, <laughs> sucker, you got zonked. And then Rita Gonzalez was at the other end. She's like, the heck's going on down there? You don't want a selfie with her. You want a selfie with me. Well, I got a selfie with Rita Gonzalez, too. But I made Tegan Knox purple. Because I remembered her from her days in WCPW. So again, Ruby Riot, don't lie to us about being Heidi Love, Heidi Lovelace. Boo. Look at that minor boo. Not that pure boo hatred. Like, boo, Sonya Deville. Boo, Sonya Deville. No, you get the minor. Get the stink eye. Yeah. Yeah. The stink eye. I know you. That's okay. I need to. Tranquilo, or however thought how to say that word. But again, Matt Cross, Son of Havoc. He just looks better as Son of Havoc. Again, he has more gray hair than I do, and he's younger than me. I don't know, folks. Let me know in the comments. Is it better to have gray, all gray hair, or just no hair? I don't, I don't know. But uh, so those these so the first match, Sticky Dice taking on Matt Cross versus Ricky Starks. This was actually really fun. Uh, Zicky Dice goes out there. He has this plastic fanny pack. Don't touch my fanny pack. We don't want to. He goes out to the outside. So crosses on Starks. Start the wrestling match on the inside. I'll say what Starks and Cross? They have really good chemistry together. Um. <laughs> And Zicky Dice eventually interjects himself very well. How do you like me now? We don't like you. The NWA crowd's unique in the fact that they will chant. It's always good. And they just want to chant. They just want I don't know. They want to chant, but they don't want to take over the show. WWE you want to take over the, the WWE audience wants to chant and take over the show. Again. Beach Ball Mania. Might, we might have have to have beach ball mania here too. That's that's a whole other issue. One day when, when my nephews realize the fun of beach balls, video games, bah, beach balls. Uh, then there was the again Matt Cross. There's a cross cutter again, really good. I just miss him as son of habit. It's not the same. And Matt Cross deserves to be a TV champion. He's really done good as Zicky Dice. He's smart, though. He knows it's like, hey, if I let these two beat each other up, I can take advantage of the situation. Uh, again, Cross and Starks eventually, they close on each other. Dice is quick, again, to try and seal the win. You have the cross cutter, which is pretty cool. I have no idea how he does that and actually maintains balance. I, I like, break something. But then Zicky Dice comes out with a win after the cross cutter. He shoves Matt Cross out to the ring. Uh, he pins Ricky Starks. And I'll tell you what, this was fun. You had the blatantly cowardly heel, kind of the two, the baby face and the tweener going at it. This was fun. I, I really like this match. This was a surf and turf match. And oh, oh, oh my god. Wow. If you thought 
I had a lot of the bubbly. Nothing I've ever had can have the same look as May Valentine. May Valentine, you have to lay off the cook. Because her diary, she had uh, Sal, what's her face, as her new BFF? I was Isaac's, and my girl had a BFF as a guy. Yeah, that's not sitting too well. If my girlfriend had a woman as a BFF, I'm okay with that. Not a guy. No bueno. Even though she even though she did do Sal's makeup. Which it looks like that thing like dads let their daughter do to them. Like when they're like little kids, they're like, Oh daddy, you wanna have a makeup party? And that's like Yeah, sure. I'm just gonna watch college football. No one's gonna see this. And this will occupy her until kickoff. So yeah, the dad gets all kind of made up with like lipstick and eyeliner and Looks absolutely goofy. And as he's sitting on the couch watch, watching Michigan versus Notre Dame, like the wife comes in, like sees the daughter asleep, like taking a nap in the chair. She stares at her husband. And then she looks at her husband again saying, why are you wearing my pink lipstick on your eyes? And the dad's like, See how peaceful it is in this house? Tranquilo. Oh, 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 oh. Yeah. Dads, you know that feeling. I don't know that feeling. I don't even know if I let my, my niece know. I don't even think about it. I think once I had to do that at a sleepover camp because all the counselors did and I think I just got like I think I got, like, my fingernails. Yeah. But don't let that out. Because I do not have that picture. So I cannot necessarily prove that. But, yeah, it's like one of those. And, and again, there's a whole bunch of commercials like that. I'm sure that happens. Like, yeah, you know what? For 20 minutes apiece until football, you can draw all over my face with your mom's makeup. Go take a nap on the couch while the Michigan Notre Dame game plays. And I'm happy. As I said, they're eating my cheese. It's with eyeliner on. <laughs> yeah, that would be funny. I think my ex girlfriend wanted to do that to me once. She wanted me to have like that like makeup day with her. I wanted to paint her toenails because I could make that. Because you start the toenails and you work your way. Uh, yeah. You know what I'm talking about. But with that, that was kind of funny. But May Valentine, get off the coke. Okay. Not a good look. Because her eyes are like, I can't even mimic what her eyes look like. Yeah. Like slack jawed, slack. It's that weird slack jawed, slack eyed, slack cheek hole kind of deal. Like, yeah. She was doing something besides painting eyeliner with her and her girlfriends in the ladies' dressing room. Yeah. Uh, so then we had a. She received his interview. Yep, that's right. Let's go, let's go back to pro wrestling. Again, whenever he would say no, the crowd would go, yes! And then one guy shouted, what? And when he would say, yes, the whole crowd would go, no. So that was kind of fun. And by the way, Shooter Stevens, there are degrees higher than third degree black belts. Generally then, I know in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, you become a red belt. Which I think there's only, I think there's like 10 of them. A really small amount. In judo, you get your red and white striped, also known as your coral belt. Again, 
I don't know the exact numbers, so, so don't hold me to this, folks. What I mean, there's only a few that I can think of. The one guy has his YouTube, and he has his coral belt. The other guy does it for when he kind of visits Sambo schools, has his coral belt. I've only seen two coral belts. I know there's more. Don't get to me and say, Oh, well, how about Tom? You don't know what you're talking about. Like, no, I know there's more. I've only seen two of them, though. But it's the red and white alternating band. That's like the degree above black belt. So again, Tranquilo. I, I know there's more out there. Again, Jiu-Jitsu. There's, I think, red belt's the limit. They're, I don't know if they do a coral belt. Red and white alternate. If they do, it's definitely Elios Gracie. So I think Hoist Gracie earned his red belt. Or was, I forget if it's Hoist Enzo, Renzo, or one of the other guys earned their red belt. But that's a debate for another, another time. Again, if you know more, feel free to comment. I don't mind being corrected. I don't know everything. I just see, like, YouTube things. Oh, this guy has a coral belt. That guy has a coral belt. There's, I know there's more out there. But those are the only two I see regularly on YouTube. Again, there are degrees higher. I don't think there is such a thing as 10th degree. I think after, like, three, you get, like, your red belt or something. All right. I think karate has the, they only go with the black, but whatever. That's a whole different thing. Again, you want to correct me? YouTube's, you can comment right there, and you too can get your shout out. Uh, so with that, again, the question mark, he gets all the shoots. Then it's the question mark versus Trevor Murdoch, and oh my, I don't know what Trevor Murdoch did, but his chest looked like hamburger already. Uh, it was kind of brawl time. Again, Trevor Murdoch's NWA from the 70s. He's the best. He had the top rope bulldog. Uh, the question mark missed the Mongrovian spike. And I'll tell you what, Trevor Murdoch defeated the question mark. And Aaron Stevens is coming in, just jumps the question mark. Just jumps, I'm sorry. Trevor Murdoch in defense of the question mark. Yeah. It was a ham sandwich of a match. It was only like three moves long, I think. Trevor Murdoch wins. It's a ham sandwich. Then you have Nick Aldis promo again. The villain! Yeah! Modern Skull comes out. Again. He's the best. He's like, right here, right now. It ain't not happening. And there was a circle square thing. I have to figure out how to get to Circle Squared. I would like to be a part of that. That would put, well, me out more. I could give meaningful critiques. I'm not going to bash a person unless they're absolutely terrible. I mean, I think the last match I gave on Circle Squared, I think I gave a cheeseburger anyway. Or was it different turf? I forget. It wasn't that bad, though. I mean, I'll be honest and fair. I have to figure out how to do that so I can get more exposure for one hobo Tom. Then we had Melina. Oh, then we had, no, before that, we had Eddie Kingston and the Pope. Again, because he's pimptacular. I love the names they come I I love the made-up wrestling words. Uh, then the bouncers, again, they turn on Eddie Kingston, mainly for money. And, well, not the bubbly. The beer, baby. But I do enjoy my bubbly. This is the end of the bubbly. 40 days. Bye bye. Ah, so good still. So the bouncer is throwing Eddie Kingston again for, for beer and some cash. They're bouncers. What do you expect? One guy's name is the Beer City Bruiser. You give him beer, he's happy. Then we had Melina taking on Thunder Rosa. 
and I was half expecting the finger poke of doom. I'm like, so both are so hot. You know what? I didn't know Katie Forbes had a six pack from Impact, but I'm like, I'm like, wait a second, two, four, six. She's a six pack. That's a muscular six pack too. I'm impressed, Katie Forbes. Thunder Rose is just hot. She looks like a woman at the gym. Melina, oh, Melina, if you weren't married and had no, oh, I don't care about the kids part. Things out due to you, though, Melina. Milf. Yeah. Uh, I was kind of half expecting, half expecting the finger point of doom. That didn't happen though. Eventually, Mina's playing mind games. She rolls out of the ring, goes into the crowd, and she gets counted out. What's that about? Um. Hey. Thunder Rosa. I'm single too. If you're ever on Tona Beach, look me up. And by the way, Thunder Rosa, I could make you a better belt. Uh, Allison K eventually comes down. She backs down Melina back into the ring. Camille shows up. She spears Allison K. Camille on Thunder Rosa. I have no idea what's going to happen. That's kind of how the show ended. This whole thing, this was confusing. I hate to do this. This is a piece of toast. With all that being said, I mean, wow. NWA started off so hot. Ended so pee poorly. Or bubble poor. I hate to say it, folks. NWA this week, it was a ham sandwich. So that was NWA and Impact. Um, one of the things to look forward to. Tomorrow is that I'll be doing my predictions. I, I can't mention anything about being broken for fear of the Von Breaker of men showing up. And you have saw my predictions. Talk about AEW that night. Uh, eight, uh, predictions probably during the day. And then Thursday, I'll Thursday night eventually I'll get to. Uh, Super Showdown, because I'll watch probably the first half of it. I'll catch this the next half later. So I have to work. Uh, Friday is Friday Night Smackdown, as usual. Saturday, I'll be watching some Revolution. Whoa, way. Come the Revolution. Every, every day. I don't even... I don't, I'm so bad at singing. You want to see the hobo karaoke, you can check out... Um, when I work, when I went to the races a couple of videos ago, or in about two weeks, I'll be doing my two-year anniversary show where I give you a little bit of 